Alright, this is part two. You know that movie called The Raid? Yeah, that movie. Remember that movie? Yeah, we know that movie. Yeah, that movie was a highly entertaining movie, man. But the story was not the greatest story. Since I, the story wasn't the story wasn't great. So as I told you, I find what I find Reloaded more entertaining than The Matrix One, obviously. But Matrix One is 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 is, is a better movie because it has a better story, better in quality, but not necessarily better in quantity. The the, the, the Matrix Reloaded has 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 is more entertaining. When I saw Matrix Reloaded, I saw Matrix One. Clearly, Reloaded is more entertaining to watch than Matrix 1 because you have Neil's the one kicking ass. You have all this action sequences in the movie. A lot of action in the movie. Whereas Matrix 1 does not, doesn't really have that much action. It leans more towards story, the quality of story. They free Neil's mind. It's a better story, obviously. A better movie. But Matrix Reloaded is more entertaining to watch. Just like I find the prequels, to be honest, more entertaining than the originals. Because the originals are, are a, little che- a little cheesy. It's dated. But the story of the originals is better than the prequels. That's why I like the originals better. Well, I mean, I like the originals better. I mean, I like the the, the story of the originals better than the, than the prequels and the sequels. But in terms of entertainment, you can I I I find this, the prequels and sequels more entertaining than the originals. To be honest, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I'm being honest. When I saw that, when I saw what the Star Wars sequels, even though the stories are a mess, obviously, and it's terrible, obviously, the movie is more entertaining to watch than the, 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 the originals when you watch it, obviously, because of technology. But that doesn't mean it's better. The, the, the originals have better a better story. At the end of the day, it comes down to your story. Well, how good is your story? Story trumps entertainment all the time, right? Just like I find Transformers more entertaining to watch than Lord of the Rings. But in terms of a movie and quality story, it's not better than Lord of the Rings. I find Scarface more entertaining to watch than The Godfather. But The Godfather has a better story. It's a better written story. Scarface is, a, is, is an amazing story too, but it's not, as, it's not as good as The Godfather in terms of quality of story, right? You see what I'm saying? Oh, you saying? Yeah, you got to separate the entertainment from the story. There's some movies that are better, that are more entertaining to watch, but they're not necessarily better movies. See what I'm saying? They're not necessarily better movies. Yeah, I mean, she's saying, yeah, you have to, you have to separate, separate, separate the two, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my deal for Warner Bros., obviously. Robert will be shocked by he, he asked me, oh, Ivan, how much are you making your game for, by the way? Oh, no, it's say your Matrix game, Ivan, no, and I don't know, after he does Zane, he's going he's gonna to beg me, Ivan, please, man, can I, Ivan, what game are you doing next? Yeah, yeah, Robert, you want to know? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be doing the Matrix 4 game, Unreal Engine 5 technology. Unreal Engine 5, Matrix 4, based off your movie, Ivan, yeah. Ivan, please, can you sign me? I want to play that game so bad, man. Yeah, don't worry about it, right? I'll resign you, he'll beg, you know what I'm saying? I might can get a raise, Ivan. Yeah, I'll give you a raise, Robert, but I'm not gonna let you do me. Six eighty thousand dollars is a good deal for the walkthrough. You're gonna walk away with like three fifty thousand plus in your bank after taxes. It's a nice paycheck, man. Three hundred grand in your bank after taxes, you're gonna walk away with. It's a nice paycheck, Robert. You can live a good life with your daughter. I heard he's having a son now. You live a good life with your daughter and your son. Since there. Yeah. Obviously. You know what I'm saying? All right. Oh my God, guys, it's here. You know, I say you hear you hear I talk. Oh my God, I am so, I, I I am lost. I am lost for words. You have no idea how excited I am to play this game. You know, I say you hear I'm talking. All right, it's here. It's come down to this. You know, I say all right, it's here. Matrix Four, deja vu. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You know what I'm saying, deja vu. You hear the you hear you hear the echo in his voice. You know what I'm saying. He likes doing that when he, when he, when he, when he, for all his intros, for, for all his parts on his walkthroughs. It's actually funny. He's in the whole world's going crazy for that Matrix. You're looking at an amazing game for that Matrix. Oh, Deja Vu, man. It'll be even better than my Zane's game. It'll be a masterpiece. Because if you, if you have a Matrix game with Unreal Engine 5 technology, you tell that story of the life of the one in the Matrix. Yeah. My idea for the game is the game starts off with Agent Smith comes back to the Matrix, obviously. You get the cutscene, obviously. You know what I'm saying, and 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 what, and when the baby is born in the real world, you have to whenever whenever the the the, the, the skin is forming, Rabbit has to press like X triangle. He has to like he has to what match what he sees on the screen. Like you know how you have the Tar Hero, something like that. You press X and like and if you if you, do, if, you and if you make an error, the baby cannot be born. You can do that, and when the guy finds the baby in in the junker, obviously when he goes when he goes to his house, obviously you got, you have to drive to your house. He goes to the house, obviously. When he goes to the adoption, you have to avoid, you have to avoid, like, the cops and all that stuff. You can do something out of the game to make it more interesting. Yeah. Look at an amazing game. And you got the life of a one in the Matrix. Him, him in high school, you, you see a clip of me, and I'm in class, cutscenes, I'm in class. 
you have all this interest and you make the game. Ivan, well, are you going to add? Yeah, because it's a game, you have to add a lot of things in the game that are not in the movie, obviously. Add a bunch of stuff in the game that are not in the movie, but like follow the DNA of the story. You can add a lot of stuff in the game to make it more interesting, obviously. It's like Path of the Neal, they add a lot of stuff that's not in the movie, obviously. You need to add a lot of stuff in the game, obviously, for, for that, based off the movie. There. Because you have no idea, guys, how bad... I mean, like, since, like, 2019, 2018, I always wanted, I always had that deja vu thought in my mind of The Matrix. I remember I watched The Matrix, okay, wouldn't it be cool if they, if I did a, a sequel, you have something called The Matrix Deja Vu. There's a glitch in The Matrix, something changes, and that's when Agent Smith and his agents come back into The Matrix. And hours later, the one is born into The Matrix. Obviously. Yeah. Ivan, how does the one born... The one is born because, because Agent Smith came back into the Matrix, and because Smith is, is the negative of Neo, obviously, the negative of the one, the one is also born into the Matrix too. They have a connection, obviously, a, a small connection. They have, some, they have some connection. So when the Oracle meets with the architect, once Smith comes back into the Matrix, you get this viral thing going on in her apartment. She's like, what the heck is going on? You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, there's been something going on in there, and then... And, 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 uh, so, something changed in my apartment. The Oracle's like, what? How's that possible? She's like, deja vu. She's like, oh my, she's like, she's like, what, what do you think happened? She's like, oh my God, Smith came back. And she meets with the, with the architect in some park and she sits on a bench. And she, 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 yeah, if Smith came back, that means the one will also be, be, be born to the Matrix. And that's when they go and meet the machines. And says, so, 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 any minute now, the one, the, 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 the new code of the one will be created. Because Agent Smith come back, Smith is connected to 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 the, to, 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 to the one, because Neil copies himself, copies himself onto him. He's copies onto Neil. Yeah, holy shit, you're creative. Yes, very creative. And and the Oracle Music Machine. Yeah, the one the one will be reborn in a couple hours from now. And and, and so instead of the Oracle and the Architect decreeing the one being reborn, no, the one is reborn because Smith came back to the mansion. Because Smith is Neil's office, and Neil also comes back. Something happens with the something happens with the one. The one is also born in the Matrix. Because they're connected to each other. So it's like the Smith cloned himself onto Neil. And that's why they have a bit of a connection. Holy shit, I'm creative. Yes, very creative. And once the Oracle meets with the machine god, the machine obviously, the, 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 the seed of the one is not creative. How is the baby born? I don't know. You get you have this light, the source code, and, the, and the, the, you get this like sperm that comes out of the source code. And it f goes into the goo and it forms the, the biological body of the baby. And then once the machines plug the, the plug the plug on the back of the baby, the one is now born in the matrix. You get this electricity, and you get the, the green code, and the flesh, the skeleton, the flesh forming the baby, and you get this, this light in the code that represents the source code of the one, the anomaly code of the one. And because the one is human, he's also, he's born as a human being. Because he's also half machine, he, he has a machine birth in the matrix. Whereas in the real world, he has a biological birth. A sperm forms the body of the baby. Biologically, it wasn't in the, in the matrix, it is for, forms by some electricity, which represents the one being half machine, half man. Because he's a human, he's also born as a baby in the matrix. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean, she's saying, yeah. I've mean, how did the Oracle and the Architect go into the, the real world? They go through this like mirror. Remember in, 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 in Reloaded One, the mirror was the gateway from the real world in the Matrix. Yeah. The moment Neil touched that that touched that 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 what that mirror, he went into the real world. He woke up in the real world. Yes. The Oracle and the Architect, they go through this 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 mirror. They go to that same room that where Morpheus first met Neo, obviously. You know what I'm saying? When they go into the room, the Oracle, the Oracle, the Oracle and the Oracle, they look at each other. Oh my God! So many memories. This, this is this is where he first met Morpheus. He first Morpheus first first met him. He's like Neo. He's like, oh, I miss him. You know, so the Oracle says, "I miss Neo," and I'm saying she misses him obviously. Yeah, and they go through that. This is are you sure this has never been done before? You know what I'm saying they go through the, the, the they, they they go through that that mirror. And that's how they end up entering the real world. And they meet with them. They don't go into Zion. No, they go into the machine world. And they end up meeting with, with the machine god. And they talk about how the one, the one, the one will be reborn on stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 Smith has duped us all. We, we all underestimated him. Yeah. Neil failed. He said he could defeat him, but he couldn't even, he couldn't defeat him. And then the Oracle's like, I'm afraid. Of you. I'm afraid. Of, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm af you know what I'm saying? I, um, um, I told him he was not too bright. I'm afraid he was not the chosen one. Yeah. The, the, this one will be lucky. This one is the seventh one. The lucky one. Which is me, obviously. And that's why I look at a massive story. Yeah, man. 
know what I'm saying? Warren Rose will tell me, Ivy, come work for us, man. Like, come on board and work for us. My like, guys, I don't need your money. I don't want to work for you. You can't afford me, man. I have my own keys. I have my own company. Why would I work for you? You can't afford me. You can offer me a 100 minute contract, a 300 minute contract. There's nothing here how much money we need to make for the movie. For Zanus. You know, if we can't afford you, you're too fucking big. Yeah, I'm too fucking big. I made my billions off my movie and my merch. I don't need your money. <laughs> yeah. Come work for us, Ivan. I'm like, no, guys. I don't want to work in Hollywood and why? I don't need your money. And the cops is like, Ivan, sign me up. Are you fucking kidding me? I want you I want to tell this story. You 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 was the one kicking ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you was the one kicking ass. Yeah. Yeah, I need you guys to co-write the movie, co-write the script. Ivan, right, you're gonna write it? No, I'm not gonna write it. But I'll give you. I'll have. I took. I'll, I'll. I'll take my notes. I'll give you guys my notes to study, and I'll. I'll be there in the room with you, giving you my ideas, and you guys just write. And I'll have my two script developers help you out. John Favreau, Dave Filoni, Zach, uh, um, Zack Snyder, James Gunn. Because I might choose James Gunn, perhaps. I might hire maybe James Gunn and maybe Ryan Coogler, perhaps. I can grab James Gunn from DC and have him work for my company and pay him a lot of money, more than what even DC's paying him. You can grab Ryan Coogler from Marvel. Don't hate me, Kevin Feige. You can grab those guys and have them be the boss of your company. And they'll help, they can help you write that major script, obviously. Obviously. Ryan Coogler, I'd pay him, like, I don't know, like a $47 million, like, flat royalty amount for him. James Gunn, I'd pay him maybe 50, 53 million or something like that. 54 million bucks. Ryan Coogler, I can pay him $46 million. Forty-five flat $45 million of the roles. That's good pay for Mike Hoover. You pay him his, for his yearly salary, like 3.5, 3.8, 2.7 yearly salary. You give him a nice uh, piece of the profit. That's a good pay for Mike Hoover. He doesn't make that in Hollywood. Probably makes his $5, $10 million in Hollywood. So I'm saying. You grant all those guys their freedom, and they're going to be the Boston company. That way, that way, they respect you. There's nothing worse than being a dirty businessman. Yes, the, the gatekeepers give the, the, these guys a good deal. They're able to live a life with their family and all stuff. But I told you, there's nothing worse than that being in a relationship and you constantly have to fuck all these people to make your money. It's not It's not fun. And you get burned, too. You get burned, too. Yeah, you get burned, man. They burn. All these people are dirty. They get burned. So I'm saying? Damn it. Yeah. So I, you're thinking Michael B. Jordan? No, yes, I'm thinking Michael B. Jordan for to play the role of the grandson of Morpheus Naomi. I'll pay Michael nine million for the first movie, The Matrix Four. Give him zero point zero one, or give him five million, five point five million dollars of the profits. Give him five point five million. That's a good deal for him. You give him two fifty k for the merch, thirty five hundred dollar gas card, two thousand dollar gift card, commercial money. I don't know forty thousand dollars worth of commercial money, and you can give him. He gets money for speaking for earnings. We'll make his 150, 200, 250, 300, 400k in speaking for earnings. Around probably two, 250k in speaking for earnings. Good pictures for Michael Jordan. You sign him to like a $2 million deal for the game. For the Matrix game. So you sign a massive contract. Michael Jordan signed like what? Like a 17, 16.8, 16.7 million dollar contract. He doesn't make that kind of money in Hollywood. It's a mass, almost a 17 million dollar deal. It's a massive contract for Michael B. Jordan. Because Michael will tell me, Ivan, if you want me to be exclusive for your Matrix movies, you better offer me a bowl of money. Because Hollywood's going to be throwing me offers. Uh, this is, I, I, can, I can easily make more money, you know what I'm saying? Guys, I don't want you signing on board for other quarters. You're only exclusively allowed to work on my movie. That way you're focused and you're not stressed out. And once the trilogy is finished, obviously, you, you can now what? You can now go to Hollywood and you'll get your offers, obviously. The reason why I want the contract to be exclusive is because I want these guys focused. I don't want them stressed out. There's nothing worse than filming a movie... You constantly have to go to like America and film all these other movies. You're all stressed out. No, if you if you want to if you don't to keep Michael and all them happy, you gotta offer them a big contract. That way, the, the Hollywood doesn't even pay. That way, you keep them happy, obviously. Now, for the second movie, I can pay Michael Lano twelve point eight million. Twelve point five million, I can pay him for the second. No, second movie, I can pay him eleven point five million, and give him. Another, give him, you can, for, for the second movie, you can give him $6 million of the profits. Or 0 0.01. Give him a little bit of a raise. It's a good deal for him. No, just give him 5.5 for the second. Same amount. And the third movie, you pay him like $12.8 million. And you can give him 0 0.02 and give him a nice $11 million of profits. It's a good deal for Michael. He doesn't make that in Hollywood. And he signs, and for the, th for the second game, you can pay him $2.3 The third movie, you can pay him $2.6 for the game. 
good deal for Michael, but he doesn't get squad the profits for the games. If their agent wants Ivan, what about a piece of profits for the games? I'm like, no, I'm not giving Michael a piece of profits for the games. He's not worth it, man. I'm already pay- giving him a piece of profits for the movies. I'm not giving him a piece of profits for the games. He only he gets his flat salary, and that's it. He doesn't get shit off the games. And if you sign Michael to do like that, he won't be angry. Yeah, Ivan, I'm not angry. Even though Hollywood's gonna offer me a lot of money, you offer me a rich contract, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I can. This is enough money to last me for years. Yeah, M- millions in your bank, my gold. It's enough money to last you for years. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Then Brie Larson, I can sign her to what? For the first movie, I can sign her to what? I don't know. Pfft. Sign her to like a ten million dollar deal. For the first movie. 10.5 million dollar deal. You can give her 0.02. Give her 11 million dollars of profits. That's a good deal for Brie Larson. You can sign her to like a 2.5 million dollar deal for the game. In the second movie, you can sign Brie to like a 12 million dollar deal. Around there. 13 million dollar deal. No, 12.5 million you can sign her for the second movie. 12 million is good enough for her. Sign her to a 12 million dollar deal for the second movie. And you can give her eleven million dollars of profit or zero plus zero two. And then if she's in the third movie, I don't kill her off. Sign her to like a fourteen, thirteen million dollar deal for the th- third movie. Thirteen point three million dollar for the third movie around there. And you give her zero point zero three. Give her a nice fifteen, sixteen million dollars of the profits. It's a good deal for Brie Larson. That's a fat contract for Brie, obviously. And you pay her like two point eight million, two point nine million for the third game. But chances are, I might kill off Brie Larson and John Zenzi in the second movie. So they'll sign for they'll sign off for two for two movies. Which is a good deal for them, obviously. Right? And then Paul Benny, I'll, I'll sign him to the same deal as Brie Larson for the for the movie. I think Paul Benny is good for that for that for that for that movie. He has that mysterious look. He's good for the movie. You can have him be part of the Nebuchadnezzar crew. Obviously, sign him to the same deal that I just mentioned for Brie Larson. So Paul Benny and Brie Larson, I'll sign him to the same deal because they're worth about the same amount of money. Sign those guys to the same deal. And then John Cazenzi, you can sign him to like a sixteen million deal for the first movie. Give him four million dollars of profits. That's a good four million dollars uh, 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 bonus, a one point five post winning bonus, and you give him a nice like twenty eight million dollars of profits or zero point zero seven. Twenty eight million. The third, the second movie, you can sign him to like a seventeen point five eighteen million deal. Give him five five point five million dollars of profits, one point five million post winning bonus. You, you sign him to like a thirty one million dollar deal. In the third movie, you can sign him to what? You can sign him to what? An eighteen point five million dollar deal. Around there, eighteen point eight million, and you give him a six million of the bonus, seven million bonus, three million post winning bonus. You sign him to a thirty five million dollar deal, thirty four million dollar deal, or zero point zero seven. That's a good deal for 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 for, for, for John Cusanti. That way, you keep him happy, and he, he when Hollywood offers him a lot of money, he will not be angry. Because guaranteed, a wide film in the Matrix, Hollywood's going to be throwing John Tazanzi, Brie Larson, Michael B. Jordan a lot of offers. 8 million, 5 million, 10, 15, 20 million dollar contracts. Michael B. Jordan and Brie Larson, they're probably going to throw them maybe 8, 7, 6, 5 million dollar contracts. Where John Tazanzi, because he's big, they're going to throw him 15, 20 million dollar contracts. 12, hey, John, you want to do this movie? Sorry, guys, I'm locked on for Ryan's movie. And he won't be angry because I, I'm paying him more than what Hollywood's even paying him. If he's making his nice $28 million in royalties and his rich bonuses and salaries, he won't be angry. He also gets one point five million dollars for the merch. He signed a massive deal, yeah, because he's a bigger ace actor, obviously. Whereas Brie Larson and Paul Bettany get two fifty k for the merch. They get two fifty k for the merch. Uh, some say they get two fifty k for the merch, obviously, because they're, they're small ace actors. The small ace actors, the rising stars, Brie actors, they all get their flat two fifty two fifty thousand dollar deal for, for for the merch, obviously. Whereas the bigger Acers, you give them 1.5. But don't go any higher than that. They don't want them, you don't want them ripping you off. And Hell Barry, I can sign into the same deal pretty much as 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 as, uh, as what? As John Tzanzi. And then Ben Affleck, I'll sign him to a massive deal for the three movies. The amount of money, you already know how I'm, the amount of money I'm willing to pay for the great zip, I'll match it. And you give him sl- slightly higher raises for the for the next two movies. And have him be the, the leader of the Nebuchadnezzar, Ben Affleck. I think he's good for the Matrix. You can have him be the leader of Nebuchadnezzar. And for that movie, I'm going to have to hire stuntmen who know Kung Fu to train what? Me and all my actors in Kung Fu, obviously, for the movie, obviously. Yeah. They're going to amazing with that major trilogy. 
if Warner Wolves is interested in selling off the rights, I'm going to choose the Matrix over Great Escape, most likely. Because you're looking at me. I want to make that Matrix movie so bad. Look at an amazing story. Amazing story, I'm in. I'm making for six seventy million dollars. Better technology than even the uh, the original. Ivan, you think your major shows will be better than the originals? I think it'll be close. I'm not gonna say it'll be better. I don't want to be cocky, obviously, but I don't think the first major, my major four, will top the first major's movie. I don't think it will, because that's very it's very hard to top that kind of story. I think it'll be just as good, or maybe a bit worse. I don't know. It might be better, but I don't want to be cocky because the major's one's a masterpiece. It's very tough to top that that, that major story. But the Matrix 4 will be up there. It will be an amazing story, man. The Life of the One, the Matrix. Look at an amazing story. Is there? Yes, yeah, so that's how much money I want to pay all my stars. And those are the guys I'm thinking of. And the Cisco actor who was in Flash, I can pay him a nice $2.5 million for the first movie. That's a good paycheck. He doesn't make that in Hollywood. He gets his two 50k merch, but he doesn't get squall through all these. The second movie, you can pay him a nice $6 million. That's a good deal for him as the operator. You can give him 250k for the merch. In the third movie, you can pay him his alias or salary. Pay him nine and give him a nice 0 0.01 or 5.5 million dollars of profits. Five million of the profits. He's a BS actor. Give him five million dollars of profits. You can do a good like that for him. And KJ Apple, pay him a bit more. Pay him 3.5 million for the first movie, 250k merch. Second movie, you can pay him a seven, 250k merch. Third movie, you can pay him as 9.3. Pay him a bit more than Cisco actor because he's bigger than him and give him 5.5 million dollars of profits. Or 0.01. It's a good deal for KJ Apple. He doesn't make that in Hollywood. That's what I'm saying. The biggest actors do not get squat of the royalties. They're not worth it. Only the Zayas actors is the exception. The Zayas is a unique story. But for all the, for all the movies, the biggest actors don't get squat. But, but, but by the third movie, KJ Apple and, and, and the Cisco actor, whoever I choose, there'll be A-less actors by then. That's why by the third movie, you can pay them their nine. Because they're now A-less actors. They're not worth more money. They're now A-less actors. They're world famous. You can pay them their nine for the third movie. But they have to sign exclusive contracts. I don't want them working in Hollywood, man. Guys, this is an exclusive contract. Unless you're already locked on to do another movie, then you, I have no choice but the what. I have to find a way to make it work with the schedule. But if you're not locked on for anything, it's exclusive. Whereas if you're already locked on, you have no, you, they have to work, obviously. They sign a contract, obviously. But if they're not locked on, I want, I, I want you only working on my movie. It's an exclusive contract. What I'll do is, if they're locked on to do a movie, I'm going to I'm gonna have to call Holly, the Hollywood conference. Hey, man. Is it, is it possible you can delay your movie for another, like, maybe eight months? Because I, I need my guys working. After they work for four months, and I'll have them I'll have them ready. To, they, they can go back to Hollywood and work for you if they're locked on already. Now, if we can make it work, we don't mind delaying it. Yeah, just, just delay it for a good maybe six months. Have my guys shoot shoot in Australia, you know in America for the Matrix trilogy. And that Matrix movie. And after that, whenever they're available, they can they can film. They can film what? Their, their movies in, in Hollywood. You can find a way to make it work with Hollywood, obviously. Here we go, guys. I'm going to go get a coffee. Don't hate me, I'm
Alrighty, sorry for the long wait. I was gonna go upstairs to make a coffee, but um, they're already making. They, they, um, my youngest brother war is making one, so I'll wait. After this video, after the, I shut this camera off for part three, I'll have my coffee ready to go, and you won't have to wait, obviously. Yeah, so that's my deal for all the stars for the Matrix franchise. If I purchase the rights, I'm seeing hypothetically here. If I purchase the rights on the Matrix. If not, I'll just do the Grey Escape with Keanu Reeves. So Keanu Reeves is obviously hoping I do the Grey Escape. Whereas what? Ben Affleck and all of them are hoping I do the, the Matrix because they want to be they want to be saved for, for, for longer, obviously. They, they, they want to be... Yeah, I want to be a part of that Matrix franchise. Like, when you, the one kicking ass, all those creepy cops and agents. Yeah, man. What an amazing movie. My deal is two point two billion dollars for the rights of the Matrix franchise. That's my deal for Warner Bros. If they want three billion, my guys, I'm not paying you three billion bucks. The man, the brand is not worth that. It's only worth about two two point two billion dollars. It's not worth three billion dollars. George Lucas sold Star Wars for four billion, and Star Wars is much bigger than the Matrix IP. As so I'm not going to rip me off, two point two billion dollars is a good deal for the rights of the Matrix. That's a good deal. Obviously. It's a good deal, some saying. Huh? It's a good deal. What I might do is when I purchase the rights off the Matrix, I'll purchase the rights. I'll purchase. What I can do is I can have what? I can have Warnables keep the rights for the originals, if they if they if they want, and I I have the rights for the sequels. You can do that if you want, and you cannot sell the 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 the, the, the what. The, 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 to make it easier for my team, I can have Warnables keep the rights for the originals. Okay, the orig the rights of the originals is yours, but I want the rights to create the sequels, and I have all the rights for the games and the C and, 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 and all new upcoming Matrix projects, whereas you own the rights for 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 for, 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 for the what for the for, for the originals. But I want Resurrections to lead from the canon, obviously. So I'm saying, you can do it like that. That way, it's easier for my team. I don't have to worry about because if I purchase the rights for the whole thing, I, I have to what. The main, or I can just purchase the rights off the whole thing. Not a big deal. I'll just, I'll just, it's good, it's good to own the whole thing. That way, uh, Warren Bros. does not rip you off. I'll just own the, I might have Warner Bros. own the rights to the originals. Okay, you guys own the rights to the originals. You can sell the originals, but I own all the rights for all the new upcoming major projects. And I own all the rights for the games. So the sales for the, for the sequels and the games, the, all that money goes to me. Whereas the sales for the originals, our money goes to you. That way, they can that way they can make some good money. You can do a deal like that for that. You can do a deal like that for what? You can do a deal like that for what? For for for, for Warner Bros. So I'll give you two point two billion dollars for the rights to make the sequels and the rights for all the game, the games and the merch too. I own the rights to the merch too, but you own the rights to the originals. You can still sell the originals on on Amazon and retail around the world, but I don't own the rights. That way, it's easier for my seventh team. I don't have to do all that dirty work. I'm saying. I can do a deal like that for Amazon. Okay, you own the rights to the originals, the first three Matrix movies, but I want Animatrix and, 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 and Resurrections deleted. And I own the rights to the merge, and I own the rights to, to the sequels, and I own the rights to the games. Whereas you own the rights to the originals. Okay, okay, have this, the, the legal advisor put that. That way it's easier for my team, because I don't, I, don't, I don't feel like selling the originals on my fucking website. No, I only want to sell the movies that I made, the sequels and my merge. And the games, and that's it. So I don't need. I don't need. I don't. I don't. I don't want to own the rights of the originals. It's just, it's just more work for my seventeen. Okay, to make it easier, my team, you own the rights to the originals. So those who have not seen the originals, they can buy it off you guys. But I own the rights to these sequels, kind of like the Amazon deal, right? Amazon owns the rights to make the Lord of the Rings show, but they don't own the rights to the originals or the rings. So I'm saying, you do it like that for them. And I'll give one of those two point two million dollars for it. That's a good deal. The brand, obviously. Or I might own the rights to the whole thing. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna have to have this talk with, with VG, obviously. I might own the rights to the whole thing, or I might just own the rights to make the to, for the sequels and the games. That way, it's less work for my team, obviously. Obviously, right?
That's why the Warmbos, that's going to be a shock. Holy shit. That sounds like a masterpiece, Ivan. Yeah, that sounds like an amazing movie, Ivan. And you're also going to make your Unreal Engine 5 games. Yeah, go watch the Matrix Awakens demo on YouTube, guys. They go for a game like that for, Z for, for Matrix. Yeah, look at an amazing game. The Life of the One. You have all these missions. Michael B. I'm going to tell the guys, look, man. You, I'm the main character. You play as me a lot, but make sure you play as VJ, Michael B. Jordan, John Sensi, B. Larson, Ben Appen, and have a lot of missions with those, with, 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 with those, with those characters, too. I'm the main character in the store, but play with all these other characters, too. Have them have a good chunk of stuff in the game, too. So I'm saying, I don't pay them a lot of money for nothing. Have them have a good chunk of stuff in the game, too. All these missions, I'm saying. Yeah. If I end up doing the Matrix Trilogy, obviously, let's, I'm speaking hypothetically here. Let's say if I end up doing Warner Bros. agrees to sell off their rights, obviously. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. After Zane's finished filming, Peter might ask me, hey, Ivan, what movie are you doing next? I'm like, Peter, you want to know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know, Ivan. I'm saying, yeah, I'm going to do the Matrix Trilogy. Oh, the Matrix Trilogy. Are you the one, Ivan? Yeah, I'm the one. How's that going to work, Ivan? I tell him my idea for the story. Holy shit, that sounds like a magic. That's a genius plot. Deja vu. I'm like, yeah, Peter. Like, Holy shit, you're creative. You know your shit. Can I direct that movie? I'm like, no, Peter, you're not good for the Matrix. The Hollywood actors are all going to ask me, uh, can I be in that movie? I'm in that Matrix shows you. I'm like, no, guys. All right, it's not fair. Like, you're going to save those actors for like 10 years of their life, and you only see us for four years of our life, Ivan? Yes. You're good for the Zanes, but you're not good for the Matrix. I'm not kind of here. 